If someone is deceitful in a contract and you are honest and give full disclosure, you have the right to be triumphant in court. So it's all about honor and dishonor, offer and acceptance, making your wishes known on paper while being clear and expressed. The common law was our truth when this country was founded, and the right to contract is clearly spelled out in Article 1, Section 10 under powers forbidden to the states. Quote, the states are forbidden to pass any law impairing the obligation of contracts. So it is defined that we have a right to contract and the government cannot impair that right. Then again, in this Supreme Court case, it states, quote, the individual may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He is entitled to carry on his private business in his own way. His power to contract is unlimited. He owes no such duty to the state since he receives nothing therefrom beyond the protection of his life and property. His rights are such as existed by the law of the land long antecedent to the organization of the state, and that would be common law, and can only be taken from him by due process of law that's under the Fifth Amendment and the Fourteenth, and in accordance with the Constitution. Among his rights are a refusal to incriminate himself, that's the Fifth Amendment, and the immunity of himself and his property from arrest or seizure except under a warrant of the law. He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trespass upon their rights. And that's a Supreme Court decision, Hale versus Henkel, 201 U.S. 43 in 1905. The next interesting aspect of contracts comes in the form of Roman civil law, which is administered through the Admiralty maritime jurisdictions and accepted everywhere as adopted in the, Calif in the Uniform Commercial Code, the UCC. Under Roman civil law, there are some major differences with common law. In it, it presumes many contracts exist in the form of a trust. Let's talk a little bit about trusts. In a trust, there have to be three entity named. A trust only comes into existence with the intention of the grantor, creator, settler. The entity creating the trust is the creator or grantor or settler. And notice the or at the end. They are the ones with the consideration or valuable assets or the money. The next player is the trustee. The trustee is the one accepting the position of making sure the trust is executed or carried out. The next player in the, is the beneficiary. The beneficiary receives the gift of valuable assets from the settler. So let's see how this would play out in real life. Grandpa is dying and he decides to create a trust to give his assets to his children. And and uh, grandchildren. He draws up a trust agreement which is nothing more than him producing evidence in written word or it could be verbal but that would be pretty weak of his intention to place his property and possessions into a trust and have the bank president be a trustee or he can have anybody else be a trustee as long as the trustee isn't the beneficiary or the grantor. And the bank president's going to carry out his wishes, and then upon his death, say, within 90 days after his death, the trust would be executed, and X amount would go to son number one, X amount to son number two, and so on. He is named the settler, or creator as being John Doe, that would be grandpa, and named the trustee as being the bank manager, and named the beneficiaries as being son number one, number two, etc., and named the terms of the trust. Now he has to get the bank manager to sign the trust agreement to get compliance of the manager as to his fiduciary responsibility. And if grandpa was smart, he would give copies of the trust to a couple or all of the intended beneficiaries. The intended beneficiaries would then have a right to sue the trustee for failure to honor the trust agreement. Under Roman civil law, in a trust, the beneficiary doesn't have to know what's going on and the government likes this deceitful aspect of trust agreement. Why? Because in a trust, if you receive a benefit, you are deemed in agreement to the terms of the trust, even though the terms were never made clear to you and you never agreed to them. 
An example of this would be a marriage license where the state presumes you agreed to give over control of the product of your union, which would be your children, and that is why Child Protective Services can take your children, denying you your constitutional rights and due process. Due process means that you'd have to, a right to have a court case, and they can take your property without a court case first. Instead of taking you to court and then taking your children, they can take them first because you are presumed to have a trust agreement with the state, which is a corporation, wherein you have given up your constitutional rights, and as you have not claimed them in writing, you've lost them. So Roman civil law, where you, where you agreed to become a 14th Amendment citizen, a subject of the United States Corporation, by lack of objecting to it, now makes you obey all the legislated laws that apply to the citizens of the Corporation USA Incorporated. So we can see where if one doesn't object, then one agrees. This is a powerful process and we can work it both ways. Up till now, the government and the corporations have been using this process against me because I did not know that there was any way to prevent their offers to take my property, etc. Now we will discuss ways of countering this process using the same process against them and doing it in such a way that it will stand up in court. All documents you will send will be sent by proof of service and registered or certified mail to get evidence. Okay, this is an example of proof of service by mail. And in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to put the case number or the court number or whatever identifying thing you want to put up there to identify what it's in regards to. And then it's going to say proof of service by mail, documents served, one. And you're going to list all the documents that you're mailing off on, with, on this day. And we're going to name them as Notice of Default, dated January 6th, 08, quote, Declaration of John Doe, dated September 24th, 08, three, Affidavit of John Doe, dated September 2002, 08, and then the service date, month, you're going to fill that in. And that's the date that you are putting this in the mail. So I'm putting it in the mail on January, and the day is 15, 2009. I'm over the age of 18 years old and not a party to this action. I am domiciled, that means I live at, 100 Sunnyside Lane in the city of Wonderland in the state of California. So you fill in what, the, what your address is, the person who's sending this, their address, and the city that they're sending it in. I enclosed the above named documents in envelopes and mailed them with the United States Postal Service with the postage fully prepaid. And then you're going to add certified mail number and fill that in, or registered mail number and fill that in. The envelopes were addressed and mailed as follows. And then you're going to see. So addressee, and then who, who are we sending it to? That's the addressee, the person who's Getting, who's receiving this, and in this case it would be, let's say, the lawyers, Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe at 2200 Broadside Road at Take Your Stuff, California. Mailed from 100 Sunnyside Lane, Wonderland, California, and then your zip. Now, you could put mailed from the, the address of the post office if you want. I declare under penalty of perjury that the foregoing is true and correct, executed on, and that's the date that you're doing this, the person who's doing the proof of service is doing it. And then without prejudice, by, and then you're going to sign the, your name as the person who's doing the sending. Now, the person who's doing the sending has to not be a party to the case. So if it's your case, you're going to get uh, somebody who's not a party to the case, and that can be just about anybody. I mean, it would be best if you could get your, you know, the local nun to do it for you because she's not going to be questioned. But your brother could do it, or anybody else who's not a party to the case. I mean, your wife might be a little suspect in that she's going to be a co-beneficiary of if you win or lose. So you would like to get your neighbor or somebody else to do it. But remember, the person that you're going to get to do it, to be really powerful, you're going to have to call them as a witness in court. 